After sleeping off last night's Chardonnay, I've come up with a cunning plan. I reckon Oz needs to feel the ocean breeze through that barren region where his hair used to be. So I'm taking him to the very posh coastal town of Carmel on the famous Route 1. I'm going to be very careful around this, otherwise you'll end up with some rocks in your bedroom. Crikey, there's some sort of car show going on. I knew something was up when you put that smart jacket on. Can I remind you, this is a wine programme. By one of those remarkable coincidences that attends the making of this programme, we have arrived in the area during the week-long classic and collector's car extravaganza that the Americans simply refer to as Monterey. People come from all over the world. The cars here are not VW Beetles and old Ford Capris. They're very, very exclusive, rare and expensive cars, often with interesting provenance and owned by very famous people. And I've set a wine challenge for Mr. Oz Clark off the television, which is to match wine with classic cars. I'm going to look at a nice classic car and you have to provide me with a wine that is appropriate to the moment. Does that sound fair? It sounds fair. I've given Oz a selection of wines that we've collected on our trip so far. Right. Where should we begin? Would yes. you like to start something simple? A Jaguar XK120 from 1952. Not a particularly rare or difficult car to contemplate. Um, oil. Take your time. Read your book. This could take hours. You want something with, with class and which zips along. Given the kind of people I think will be in it, I'd like a, a glass of frothy champagne. Have you got any? No, I haven't. That's not very good. I've got some it? cheap Chardonnay. Let's try that. That doesn't smell too bad. It's acid, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not entirely sure that this should actually go with anything which has got an MOT. Not a very good start. Let's confuse him even more with a real crossbreed. This is a BMW M1. A strange mixture of sort of the German technocrat, styled by an Italian. It was originally made in Italy. Uh, what are you getting? I was, I was well, like, it looks like a Ford. Cortina to it me. It doesn't look like a Ford Cortina. It does look like a Ford Cortina. Was, well, you're saying that because it's white. Ah. We want something like a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's too dry, but it's also too weighty. It wasn't the most powerful car of its time. It only had a six-cylinder engine. It didn't have an eight or anything like that. But it was very, very crisp, very, very agile. And I think with this, to be honest, you should have had something like an unoaked Sauvignon Blanc. You failed. Try this. Well, I don't know failed or not. You, I, I may have failed, you were boring. This is ridiculous. I'm choosing the next car. That's what I like. America yeah. all over. I bet it's got fruity pipes, woody high notes. That would go really well with a is nice, oak? rich Chardonnay. Nice, rich Chardonnay. This should have woody high notes to go with this peculiarly gorgeous sort of milkshake and soda pop and knickerbocker glory kind of car. Well, actually, I have to say I quite like this because it is woody, it's got the oaky flavour, but it also has a bit of acidity underneath that yeah. and a bit of sharpness. Would you like to try the um, local oak Chardonnay? No, that's fine, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Well, I like it. That's a thumbs up for Oz. 365 GTB4 or Daytona. I've well, got just the one for you. Have you? And what is it? It's a, a, Merlot. It's a Merlot. A Merlot. Now, the reason I got a Merlot because I've always think with Ferraris, they don't sound quite masculine. They sound like a sort of mosquito sort of buzzing in your ear. Do you know what I'm getting slightly off there? Overheating electrical wiring insulation which is a smell you do associate with Italian supercars, so you may have done quite well there. It's a bit young to me. The thing about it is it's the Merlot grape. Lots of sizzle, not enough steak. You know, it, it, it promises a lot and doesn't deliver quite enough. And again, it may be a little bit like an Italian supercar. It promises enormous amounts. It looks fantastic. When you actually sit in it and, and, and put the carburetor into gear, the wheels fall off. <laughs> yes, they do have a reputation for, for fragility, if that's what you mean. Probably <laughs> what I mean. What is this? Is a Merlot? 
What is the defining characteristic of the Merlot? There is a Merlot Mr. called Clark. Marilyn Merlot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Merlot called Marilyn Merlot. Merlot. Merlot is easy to pronounce. It's got a relatively soft flavour. Does this go with that? This is a uh, stupid idea, matching wine and cars. Oh yes, you know, fancy car challenge. Well, it's time to get back on track and visit one of Monterey's true winemaking mavericks. We're going to see this bloke called Gary Pisoni. Gary um, Pisoni. Yeah, I thought you'd like his name. Yes, exactly. Well, just try and not make jokes about him. His mother is about 90 and she's actually active around the place. So she won't be particularly amused if you take, take the piss out of her, or take, take the mickey out of her, out of her surname, OK? Rumour has it that in order to turn the family cattle ranch into a wine business, Gary Pisoni broke into a very famous French vineyard and then smuggled some vine cuttings home by hiding them down his trousers. Well, as the French sometimes say of rustic wines, ça peut de merde, it smells... Uh, of... so, trust me, James, you're going to love him and his Chardonnay's really tasty. He won't sell his grapes to, to, to people he doesn't like. Uh, he won't sell his grapes to people who don't like his mother's pies and sausages. Uh, he won't sell his grapes to people who, who uh, then make wine out of it, and, and uh, which sells for too much money. I mean, he's a very interesting bloke. Interesting. Deranged is more like it. He drives like my mate from the other program and looks like a caveman. I'm going to call him Gary Madhead. Excellent. Quite hairy, but that's good. And this area here we have for this windy clone of Chardonnay, where the soil is a little poor. So it's a, soil. And yeah, so we get a little less crop, but it's very intense flavors. Very extracted, nice minerality to it. Look at these grapes here, James. They've got, what's it called, hen and chicken in that guy there. Yeah, chicken. But that's actually quite a good thing, isn't it, with Chardonnay? Mm -hmm. chicken you get a lot of intensity. Right, can I ask a question? Well, there seems to be a Pinot Noir vine right in the middle of your Chardonnay. Yeah, he's a, he's got a black sheep. Is that deliberate? No, it was just a mistake. That's just about enough grapes for you, James. That's the Could you make a bottle out of that? Mm -hmm. How much would you sell that vine for? This is a direct offer you're having here, Gary, so you give, well, give a sensible answer. When's your birthday? He's... Maybe I'll give it to you for your birthday. Well, I was just thinking I could come out here every year, make my bottle of wine. Yeah, but well, you know what? I'll just give it to you. Would you? Yeah, and we'll put a little name out here, James Private Reserve. <laughs> I'd like that. That's good down the pub, isn't it? I've, I've got You're a... in trouble now, Gary. I tell you, you, you'll be seeing this guy every year for the next 50 years. It doesn't bother me. Because I you own... haven't seen how much he drinks. Well, I own a I won't run out of wine, don't worry. He's not going to run out of wine, this bloke. He's got he's his priorities done. right. You heard him. This vine is mine. And that's a vine fact. And now you have to learn how to look after it. Grapes need exactly the right amount of sun exposure at the right time of day to produce good wines. Right now, we've got to take all the leaves off on the morning sun side. See how we've got quite a few leaves here? Yep. Want to expose those clusters? That one. Well, you're just going to point at them and I pull them off. Yeah, I'm the expert. You, I'm telling you what to do. <laughs> uh, that one. That one. Yes, that one. <laughs> that one. Do you normally do all this yourself, the whole vineyard? No, uh, no we've got 20 helpers. They, uh, they pick the grapes, they pull, pull the leaves off, they drop clusters. They're wonderful workers. We have parties for them every year. I give them a couple of cases of wine a year. Where'd you get the workers from? Oh, they're from Mexico. Could um, there be a California wine industry without Mexican workers? It'd be pretty rough because the Americans don't know how to do it or they don't want to do it. Now He's try very, it, great. He, yeah, yeah, try a whole cluster. Here, you, you know the way I like to do it? I, I tell people, I like the monkey bite it. Mm. That's where you get the fl real flavor. What do I do? Just shove it in the face? Yeah, just shove it in the face. Watch your shirt. Spit out the rest. That's the way, that's the way. Just like your mom told you not, you're supposed to, not supposed to do that. God, they taste terrific. Mm, well done then. You really get the flavors. Mm. That one's a bit riper. Now, you know there's wild pigs come into the vineyards to mm -hmm. eat these things. And I tell the wild pigs, if you eat my grapes, I'll eat you. They don't believe it, but I do. And Gary Madhead is a man of his word. We're invited to join a family barbecue. His dad is a Normandy Landings World War II veteran and his mum still runs the business, signing the checks every Friday for all the employees. She probably doesn't trust Gary. I wouldn't mind being Mexican and working for Gary Madhead. The food is delicious. But are his Chardonnays any better than the others from Monterey? Mm, nice. Terrific. 
It is oaky, but not excessively oaky, and it has that, that brightness that you would get from a proper English apple plucked off the tree. If you think this Chardonnay is just cheap plonk, drunk by people on hen parties in the back of those ugly stretch limousines, it needn't be. It can be like this. How much is this, sir? A bottle? Yeah. 40 bucks. 20 quid, 21 quid. Not quite cheap enough, but not disastrous. But remember, that's really very nice. Single vineyard, special place. Now I want to try this rosé too. This is rosé of Pinot Noir. What we do when we first crush the grapes, we bleed off maybe five or 10% of the juice to make a rosé. And then the remaining Pinot Noir is more intense, more extracted because it has a higher skin to juice ratio as it ferments. Mm. Because in a red wine, the red color comes from the skins. The juice is actually clear, isn't it? So the rosé is rosé because it's been exposed to the skins for a while, but not as long as a red wine has. Which oh, is exactly what a you're wine saying. fact from James. Yeah, right? I, I love it when you talk like this. How much is this a bottle? This is eighteen dollars a bottle. That's ten pounds. Nine. Well, nine. Not. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I told you, I'm getting He's it. He's done it. A good quality wine for ten pounds or less. I'm going to have some more of this as well. What about doing a wine tasting? of all these different wines, rather than just saying to Gary, you're having, doing a wine drink. He Gary, does wine you... drinkings. I try to do wine tasting. You may actually prefer to drink with him than with me, because... What, what's your view, Gary? Drinking or tasting? I don't taste wine, I drink wine. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Well, just a minute, James, before you get completely hammered with your new friend, I've got one last challenge that requires you to be able to see straight. This is our final showdown. Remember those four bottles of wine from the classic car show challenge? I want to know if James can pick out my favorite bottle of wine from that particular bunch. Well, I want you to choose one wine from those four, which you think is good and match the cars well. And the other three, I've got a Winchester 243 here. And you will have to blast the other three from the face of this planet. Now, James, you know this gun has killed a lot of wild hogs in the vineyard. So, you won't miss. Okay. Where from? Well, not from two yards. <clears throat> Put it against your shoulder tight. Take your time. Hmm, there's two Chardonnays. I'm going to try and save the Chardonnay on the right. Oz's favourite, I reckon. You've got two! <laughs> two in one shot! Okay. Oh, wow, go ahead, you got another shot in there. Watch your ears, everybody. Wow! The other one has been knocked over, but, but it, it exists still. Yes, exactly. That was it the survived. one that was from the Monterey region and had the terroir of the car show. You could virtually smell the kerosene and the petrol in the wine. That's the one with terroir. That's the one that survived. <laughs> well done, my son. Where did you the don't... kerosene come from? I'm slightly baffled about uh, that. Doesn't cars run on kerosene? No. Oh, well. I knew it was a petroleum type term. I, I thought that was an excellent challenge, yes. And um, I think wine shooting is probably the new sport of kings. Right. I arrived okay, at the now. wine that the wrong one. he would have chosen. The, the local wine with the sense of place, with terroir, the reasonable price as well, which is very encouraging. I think it was about 18 or 19 dollars, so less than 10 quid, which is what I wanted. Very, very tasty, lightly oat, full of acid flavor. Excellent. And shot to shot. That's another region ticked off, and thanks to fast cars, loud guns, and good grub, James is still on board and learning. Next time, things get complicated as we go further north to Santa Cruz and learn about blending wine with money. So pour yourself a glass of your favorite wine and join us as I sprang the camper van. Can I say on this program? I said You can say Okay, Oz does his most extreme challenge yet. And I take James to meet California's most controversial winemaker. Are you a wine buff or are you an industrialist? I'm a moneymaker. <laughs>